Mr. McBurney is wondering if there's a relationship between GPA and ACT. He took a random sample of nine out of his 101 students and recorded their GPA and ACT score. The data is below. All right, so this first um, row in my table is just their student ID number, so don't let that trip you up, okay? All right, there's the GPAs, there's the ACTs. All right, what relationship would you expect there to be between GPA and ACT? Positive. Positive, because why? Because people who first to get good grades probably study to be ACT, ACT. Yeah. And take school more seriously. People who have high GPAs probably work to increase their ACT score, right? All right, makes sense. So there's our, they call it the mini tab output. There's our table, clear. This one's clear and we can see everything, right? And all the goodness below it for conditions. So find the regression line, LSRL, for this data, and how does this equation give support for our answer? Okay, so if we're going to find the regression line, we're trying to predict ACT scores. So that would get the hat on it, right? What would my uh, y-intercept be here based on my table? Oh, look at your table, hun. Oh. Table will give it right to it, right here in, under constant, right? 1.201 is my y-intercept. And then my slope would be 7.507 times whatever the GPA is. Are we okay with that? Um, so does this give us evidence to support our claim? that there would be a positive relationship? Yes. How do you know? Positive slope. It's a positive slope, right? So positive slope is evidence for our claim of a positive relationship. OK, now the question is, is that evidence of this one sample, is it strong enough to be convincing evidence of it, right? Is it convincing evidence? So that's what we're going to do on the next page is walk you through the four-step process of this. So we're going to have to do a little flipping back and forth because we've got to use those tables, all right? So keep that handy. Do the data provide significant evidence that a positive or linear relationship is between GPA and ACT? All right, so in my state step, Again, I have to define the parameter, and that's still beta, and we're going to define it the same way we did with the confidence interval step, okay? It's the true population slope of LSRL for GPA as my x value and ACT as the Y value. Okay, what's the statistic here? Just B. It's little baby B, right? Our sample slope? which was, what, 7.507, right, from our table? So here's null and alternative. We haven't done this in a minute, have we? So we're still, it's still null, still alternative. Our symbol, however, is going to be a beta symbol. We don't use mu, because it's not means. We don't use p for proportions. We use beta for slope. So what would the null say? Beta is 0, right, meaning no relationship at all. We're trying to test for a positive linear, so how can we say that in the alternative? 
greater than zero. Does the logic follow for you there? Okay. And our significance level, it's not stated, but we're going to go with 0.05. All right. Okay. Name the procedure. See if you can come up with this. It's a one sample T test for what? For slope. All right, let's check our conditions. Here's where we got to go back and forth a little bit, right? So linear, do we, does it appear linear? Ish, right? Scatter plot, scatter plot looks linear-ish. <laughs> Residual plot, there's no major pattern there. So we're good. So that's why we'd write all the goodness out. So we'd say scatter plot is fairly linear. Residual plot shows no pattern. And that's our evidence. Independent, 10% rule, right? How many students did he test? Nine. Is that less than 10%? And he said of all the students was 101. Are we good? Slightly, barely, but we are, okay? And we also know that each um, individual observations are independent. <clears throat> normal. Where am I looking for normal? The residual dot plot right here. So, do I see any strong skewness or outliers? Nope. Here we go. So, dot plot of residuals shows no skewness slash outliers. So, we're good on that. Equal SD, standard deviation, where am I looking here? Residual plot, do I see anything fishy on that? Nope, there's no Christmas trees going on that. So we would say the residual plot shows similar variability for each x value. And then random. Is our sample random? Yep, it said random sample of nine. Okay, we good? All right, now. Formulas on the do step. You do have to show a little work here because there's not a calculator shortcut on this. But there is a shortcut, so hang on. I'm going to show you, okay? The specific formula for this t value would be little b minus big B over the standard error of our slope. Do we know those values? We sure do. So it's just a plug-in kind of thing. So. I'm going to, oops, bring my table down for a second. All right, let's plug in these values. What does it say our slope was 7, 507? Oh, what is beta? What do we say beta was in our hypothesis? Zero. And my standard error of my slope? 1.29 in there. Do you see it? So none of that was hard, right? Don't pick up your calculator. T is already given to you. Do you see it? Do you see it? 
Do you see that little number right there? Under the T column? Huh. Fancy, eh? So you don't need any fancy shortcuts. It's all right there. So it's 5.32. Huh? Oh, does it say eight? I can't read. <laughs> Mine's really, really small. Yeah. Would we still need to write out that equation? Yes. Do you do want to show this work? Although it's right, it's right there in the table. Okay. So it's not like a, it's not a killer on it. All right. Now, do you suppose the p value might be in the table too? It is. It is. It's right there, isn't it? Oopsies. Now, there is one caveat on the p-value in the table since they're given. Those p-values are always calculated with a two-tailed test in mind. Hmm. Is our test two tails? No, it's only one. So how can I adjust that? Divided by two. Divided by two. So I take what's in here, 0, 0, 0, 6, 5, 1, 1, divided by two. It's still really small, isn't it? A very very small number okay so you just have to keep that in mind the table is always reflecting a two-tailed calculation now drawing our conclusion we've done this before right connect alpha and p-value so we would say since 0 0.00003 is less than 0 0.05 what are we going to do with that Good, we reject the null. Then what does our next sentence always start with? We yeah, we have convincing evidence. Now look at our, our, our alternative, that, that was that the slope is greater than zero, right? Mm -hmm. Or in real layman's terms, it's a positive linear relationship of a positive, linear relationship between GPA and ACT scores. How do we feel about that? Not bad, is it? Huh? It's better? Okay. Let's back page. A lot of this you've we've already discussed, and I promise you this application question goes faster because it gives us our favorite phrase ever. <clears throat> so in the state step, yeah, when we define beta, it's the true slope of the LSRL for x in context and y in context. All right, and the null would be beta is equal to zero, which means no linear relationship at all. The alternative, if beta is less than zero, that would mean a negative relationship. Greater than zero would be a positive. And then if beta is just not equal to zero, that just means that there is some kind of relationship. It's not positive. We don't know positive or negative, but there is some relationship. That's what we look for in the wording. Do we have convincing evidence of a relationship between blah and blah? <coughs> okay. Plan. All that goodness is there. The do step. It's just little b minus beta, which is going to always be zero. Standard error of a little beta. And what is it we have to remember about degrees of freedom? It's n minus 2. That's because we're estimating slope and y-intercept now. All right. So we're going to go back here to that example from yesterday about noses and ears growing. OK? You remember this? That gravity is the culprit. It's really not growing. Who knew, right? We're just sagging as we get older. It's just fun facts, right? So let's, let's look at this. Okay, you're not going to read the whole thing, I know. But look, it says, look at this. We need, this we do need to know. It says, is there, 
convincing evidence of a positive linear relationship. That's important, right? And then look at this. Assume the conditions for inference are met. Do you know how much time that will save you? We love this, right? All right, so we can crank on this. We can make this one happen pretty quick. Okay, state. What is beta in this question? It's the true population slope of the LSRL for, what is x in this question? Do you remember? Age, x, oh wait. Age in years is x and <laughs> ear height in centimeters is my y value. But I do need to show the null and alternative. So my null will be that beta is what? Equal to zero. Alternative would be that beta is greater than zero. And why, why is it greater? Positive. Because we're looking for evidence of positive relationship, OK? And then we know that alpha is 0 0.05, right? Plan step. I know the conditions are met, but what do we need to write? Test. Name of the test. So it's a one sample t-test for slope. And as far as conditions go, you would just say, um, you could put it in quotes, assume conditions are met. And you're done with that part. But you love it when that happens, right? The do step to find t, all right. What is the slope in this sample line? Zero, zero, two, one, minus zero, because beta is zero, right? Mm -hmm. All over my standard error, point zero, zero, five, nine. And what does that come out to be? 0.3559. Yep. So then my p value, is it 0.7246? You have to divide it by 2 because it's a one tail test, right? That gives me 0.3523. Still a fairly high p value, isn't it? <laughs> All right. See how fast this goes and we don't have to do conditions? All right, let's conclude this. Since 0.3523 is greater than 0.05, what are we going to do? Nice. We failed to reject the null. Hmm. So do we have convincing evidence? Nope. Mm. We do not have convincing evidence of a positive linear relationship between age and years and ear height in centimeters. So did we prove anything here? Nope. We just said we don't have enough evidence to say it's true, right? Can't prove it, but the evidence isn't very strong. That's all we're saying. 